And you say good to see you in the big chair. So. Yeah. Yes, sir. It's good to be here. Thank you. All right. I, we only have limited time. I just want to jump into this thing, too, for, for uh, just to ask a couple of things. One of the main points of contention, and I had the lieutenant governor on for his uh, allotted time during this, uh, this election uh, several days ago, and one of the main points of contention, and I brought him up uh, this up with him, was the lieutenant governor's appointment of uh, Democrats to committee chairmanship. And I, I noticed in your campaign literature and some of your speech, uh, speeches that this is a point of contention to you. And, and, I, and, I, and I, I agree with you. I, I do wonder, though, can you point, since you were on the floor of the Senate and you knew what was going on, more so than the people who are not serving, can you point to where this has maybe manifested itself into some conservative legislation not reaching the floor of the Senate because it was killed before it had a chance? Uh, countless evidence. Absolutely. This happens a lot, considering the fact there are only 16 Democrats in the chamber, and he appointed mm -hmm. 13 of those Democrats to powerful chairmanships. And, um, you know, frankly, in, in this environment where the Democratic Party has completely gone off the rails, I mean, they're, they're radicalized more than ever before. It makes little sense to hold a supermajority in the chamber. We have 36 Republicans. There are only 16 Democrats. We should mm -hmm. allow Republicans and conservatives to control the agenda of the chamber, and that's not being done. You consider Hob Bryant, for example. You know Hob, uh, one of the most liberal members of the uh, state Senate. He's um, an older gentleman, but he's been there a while. Public health is what he chairs. It's one of the most powerful committees in the chamber, and so the flow of legislation, not simply in bills alone, but in amendments and things that are allowed to go forward and not allowed to go forward, he would control that. Even David Blunt with the Gaming Commission, you might yeah. remember a, a couple of years ago, he single-handedly blocked Al Hopkins' nomination that Governor Reeves had, had appointed, and uh, it's the kind of things that occur that should not be happening. We're conservatives, we're Republicans, we should be running that chamber entirely. I, I remember asking David Blunt, Senator Blunt, when he was on the air, right after being appointed, I said, uh, I'm a little, uh, uh, it's a mystery to me why you were appointed, and I think his answer was, I, I've never been to a casino before. And I thought, okay, uh, that, <laughs> that answered my question on that one. Yes, but, but do you know of any legislation where uh, doing this was actually killed, some conservative legislation that uh, either you authored or sure. uh, one of your cohorts did that did not uh, get to the floor because a Democrat was there? Sure, it's a combination of several features over several years. He's done this for the last four years, for instance. And if you look at the bills I've introduced, his big argument is, is that all of my bills, uh, a dieting committee or whatever the case may be, well, of course mm -hmm. they did because Democrats were blocking those bills or he was blocking those bills. Everything from term limits to a recall mechanism to a uh, income tax elimination process to a parental bill of rights, all of these things introduced and behind the scenes killed by either Delbert Hoseman or the Democrats that he appointed for those committees. The, uh, so, so, and I understand that the rules and regulations, you can't promise chairmanships if you are uh, elected the lieutenant governor, and I understand that. But speaking in generalities, you would not appoint any Democrats to any committees. Yes, sir, that's correct. I want to be real clear about this. Um, 20 years we've seen this country degraded, mm -hmm. our culture degraded, our government degraded. We wake up in the morning and barely recognize this country now. A big part of that is the Democrat Party pushing us so far to the left. We're not supposed to chase those people to the left. We're supposed to stand in the gap and stop them from destroying this country. The short answer is no. We have a super majority Republican Senate, 36 strong. Let's put the Democrats where they belong, not on yep. powerful committees, and let's pass Republican legislation for a change. Uh, so that means and you probably would have some uh, calls of, of racism because you have nine members of the Black Caucus that serve on, uh, as chairman of the committees. Would you? That means no black member of the of the Senate would be able to be serving on the committee uh, or a chairman of a committee, right? You know, unfortunately, people are always going to make accusations, and I'll, I'll never understand yeah. that. I'll give you an example. My favorite Supreme Court justice is Clarence Thomas. He's the very best we've got up there right now. And if there were nine Clarence Thomases on that Supreme Court, I would mm -hmm. love that court dearly and love him dearly. It's not a race issue. It's an ideology issue. It's a philosophical issue. And no matter what your race is, if you're a liberal, you don't belong governing in Mississippi. It's just that simple. When you look at you, you had a wind pool, no more than one deductible per year, uh, named for storms that died. Mm -hmm. Uh, you said the parental rights. I was looking at that. That's uh, 2764. So you didn't have any bills that actually made it on the floor. No, sir. That's the point. A lot of my bills, as you see, will be double referred. But the mm -hmm. hit is on. 
uh, Delbert Hoseman is not going to allow my bills to make it to the floor. So when he makes this accusation that somehow I haven't been effective, I would suggest that people go and look at the bills I've introduced. And, Paul, you probably looked at the list. It's everything from term limits to recall mechanisms to a, a ballot initiative process to parental bill of rights to the elimination of the grocery tax, elimination of the income tax, all good red meat conservative legislation. Now, these are things we should be passing. I even had a bill, Paul, that would have protected entirely the state of this Mississippi from any confiscation program or regulatory program that would have uh, attempted to take our weapons or our firearms. He killed that as well. Look at the list of bills I've introduced and ask yourself, is that conservative? Is that what you want as a Mississippian? I believe that's what Mississippi deserves, and I, I think that's what they want. Yeah. One of the other things that people were asking, certainly undecided voters, was your opponent's campaign has uh, asked the AG's office to investigate your filings and contributions. Uh, uh, Lieutenant Governor Hoseman, a former Secretary of State, by the way, his campaign challenged the uh, the PAC called Hold the Line uh, mm -hmm. in receiving, uh, according to newspaper story, two illegal campaign contributions totaling about $465,000 then turned around and, and contributed the money to your campaign, and you are the director of that PAC. Yes, sir. Uh, was that illegal? No, sir, not a chance. Uh, keep in mind, Mississippi has a $1,000 uh, limit on what mm -hmm. corporations can give uh, to a uh, committee or to a political action committee. Uh, that uh, CALP was rendered unconstitutional with that Citizens United decision back in 2010. And subsequent decisions by the United States Supreme Court since have indicated that corporations have the ability and should have the ability, almost like individuals, to give money to campaigns. Here's the thing. We know for a fact it wasn't illegal. No question about that. But what we did just to make sure he couldn't complain about it, we took the money and we sent it back. Nothing wrong, nothing illegal at all. Here, here, Very here's the problem with that, and, yes, and, 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 and I'm sure I'm taking you at your word on here. Yes, sir. Please but we're do. talking $465,000. You had 710000 in your kitty at that particular time. Yes, sir. You took more than half, mm -hmm. leaving you only with $245,000 that you didn't have to do. Yes, sir. And, and and you want me to believe that you, you did that just because uh, he complained about it? Absolutely. We, we won't always be transparent. It's one of the mm -hmm. things we've always tried to be is transparent and open. I'll give you an example. They also tried to make an accusation that somehow my committee was uh, not founded. Paul, I've had the exact same committee since 2007 the exact same bank account since 2007. It's all black and white. It's all yeah. sitting there for anyone to see, and I'm happy for anyone to see it. There's nothing wrong, nothing illegal. Uh, we did everything above board, everything perfectly fine. State uh, Senator Chris McDaniel. Chris, would you would you agree, and I, I have to, uh, Philip Gunn also said this is something that probably needs to be done over in the House as far as far too many committees, and I think we have far too many committees in the, in the, um, in the Senate. And I understand from the lieutenant governor, the rules committee could change that. They could, I, they could actually appoint committees if they wanted to. I'm not sure uh, if the House is the same way. But if you are a lieutenant governor, would you look uh, with the rules committee uh, in possibly getting rid of some of these uh, um, different committees? Yes, sir, absolutely. The, the Senate... The Senate is going to be a conservative Senate, mm -hmm. and that begins by reducing the number of committees and making sure that those committees are chaired by strong conservative leaders. Democrats are going to have those positions. Uh, we're just not going to have it. So, yes, absolutely, I would agree to that, and I think that's exactly how the Senate should run. We've been fighting for this country. We've been pushing as hard as we can to save what's left of this great republic. Mississippi is one of the few places left where we can do this. We actually can push back. It makes no sense to have 36 Republicans in that chamber versus 16 Democrats and still unable to get our big-ticket agenda items passed. We shouldn't have an income tax, Paul. We, should, we shouldn't have any woke culture in this state. We ought to be pushing back every chance we get, and we're not because Delbert Hoseman is blocking the agenda. A lot of people don't know this, but if you're appointed a, a, a chairman of a committee, your, your income from the taxpayers of the state of Mississippi is, uh, is I say, substantially higher. What is it? About five or ten thousand dollars more uh, on your base salary. Yes, sir. What they do, they allow you to have what's called per diem days, an additional mm -hmm. number of those days. So it's one of right. the dirty tricks that politicians use. They claim we only make ten thousand dollars a year. That's not accurate. Every time we go to the Capitol, we get paid a per diem, and chairmen are given additional per diem days each month, so they can basically enrich themselves by coming and visiting. Well, by the end of the day, you could be appointed a chairman, and you're going to make a heck of a lot yes, more, That's and right. you may not even have a bill to consider in an entire legislative session because 
Nobody even submits a bill for, for consideration. Yes, that sir. That has happened, has it not? Yes, sir, it has, unfortunately. All right, more. A couple of issues, too. Charter schools, certificate of need, initiative referendum, complete elimination of the state income tax, and uh, also grocery tax. I want your views on those, and we only have one more segment, but let's get it done when we come back yes, sir. with Chris McDaniel. Let us return to the Trust Park Studios. And again, uh, my guest is Chris McDaniel, Mississippi Senator District 42, running for Lieutenant Governor. Man, let's jump into this one real quick here. And uh, brevity would be our friend with the time we have. But charter schools and, and complete school choice, your, cho your, your thoughts on that? Yes, sir. We've seen Arkansas make moves in that direction. Other states mm -hmm. have as well. And what we have to start asking ourselves is this. In a state like Mississippi, where we certainly have some school districts that are struggling, why would we ever want to trap a child in a failing school or a failing school district? So we need to start making some strong moves that direction so these parents have more choices and the children can actually succeed. It's, this is all about upward mobility. It's all about making sure our children have chances. And I don't see anything wrong with that. I think it's a good idea. Uh, number two, certificate of need cancellation. Are we finally going to get this done? What's your views on that? Do you think it needs to be canceled? Yes, sir, it needs to be canceled. This is another conservative um, uh, reform agenda item that Delbert Hostman's been blocking. CON laws are antiquated. They're old. Many other states have already done away with them or at least reformed them, not Mississippi. What they do is block competition, and that's a bad idea. Mm -hmm. We need more competition in this state, more free market exercise. That's the way economies achieve greatness. That's the way our health care systems achieve greatness. So I support eliminating CON laws. Was the reason we did not get an initiative reform uh, bill, a referendum back on the on the on the well, uh, back in into the hopper and, and get it all the way through the process this year because of the disagreement with the House, or was there other reasons behind that? No, no, the House was pushing the bill. Uh, Representative Shanks was pushing the bill. Well, but yeah, but you had some different disagreements between the two versions. Well, the House had a more reasonable version. You can't make the, the ballot initiative process so impossible that it can't be implemented, and Delbert Hoseman was trying to do that. Look, here's the thing. The people of this state have every right to petition their government. They have every right to get around us when we're being obstructionist, and Delbert Hoseman does not trust the people to do that. The House, they did. They had a better version. In fact, the House Republicans have led most of these reforms. Reforms, and Delbert Hoseman has blocked those reforms. And if you don't believe me, ask the House membership. They'll tell you. We need a ballot initiative process, and it needs to be simple enough to get things done. That's the key. Delbert does not want to make it simple. He wants to make it impossible, and that's the wrong approach. But, but a lot of people would say this, though, Chris. You don't want to make it too easy that you just uh, override the state legislature, which whether you like them or hate them, they are the representatives of the people elected by the people. Yes, sir. The, the present system, bear in mind, it's already a, an almost impossible task. I think we've had over 200 attempts to put a issue on the ballot, and only a small handful have ever made it there. So that's a good starting point. And bear in mind, we could also bifurcate that, Paul. You could start by having a, an easier process for just simple statutory amendments and a more difficult process for the constitutional amendments. That would make sense. That's consistent with the way we exercise amendments now. But we have to make it workable, and we have to give the people the right to petition their government, because right now they've lost that important right, and yeah. that's all because of Delbert Hoseman. House version of income tax was, let's go on and get the whole thing done yes, and uh, see what happens. We are in a surplus year. The House of Senate's version was this, let's take a wait-and-see attitude. Let's do it slowly and gradually so that we don't get in trouble, which is more fiscally, uh, they think, a responsible method of doing this. Your thoughts? No, no, that's a smokescreen. It, it's really simple. There's a way to get this done responsibly. We're not talking about immediate elimination. We're talking about a phase-out based on economic triggers that are reached each year for the for the. Um, for, well, for that's the basically what we have. No, sir. Is, not, is it no, not? No, sir. No, sir. It is not. Basically, they're not attempting to get rid of the entire income tax. They're attempting mm -hmm. to phase out small sections of it, and they have no real intention to ever get rid of it so long as Delbert Hoseman is lieutenant governor. The House was on the right track. The governor was on the right track. The Republican Party was on the right track. One man stood in the way of making sure we could never get rid of the state income tax, and that man is Delbert Hoseman, and that's wrong. Right. The Republican platform speaks clearly to this issue. We have to start governing like Republicans again, and we can't do that so long as people like Delbert Hoseman are standing in the way. In the uh, on the ceasefire text line, ask uh, Chris about splitting the Madison Rankin County judicial districts. Yes, Your sir. Thoughts on that? I want to be real clear here. Delbert Hoseman right now it, it is attempting 
to draw new judicial districts, putting Madison County over in Holmes or Yazoo or some nonsense. I want to be really clear about this. Madison County is a special place in this state, and they deserve to have the same setup, the same district lines they have right now. It's not fair to Madison County to treat them this way. I'm mm-hmm. going to make sure Madison County retains those lines uh, with Rankin County, the same judges, the same prosecutors, the same DAs. That's what they've asked me to do. That's what I'm going to do. Is there a fiscally responsible way that to, to get rid of the grocery tax that doesn't harm municipalities? Yes, sir, there is. Uh, the grocery tax is punitive because it punishes the poor. It's regressive. And only about three states in this country still have a full grocery tax. Mississippi should not be one of those three. It's as simple as allowing a greater diversion to municipalities. It would offset any cuts. In fact, they would probably have more money to spend because people would have more disposable income to spend. In other words, locally. eliminate the states. Uh, uh, if you eliminate the state's portion of that, you could actually increase the municipality's portion and yes. still have a cut? Yes, sir, absolutely. It wouldn't eliminate it altogether, but it would decrease it to what? Well, no, no, you could eliminate it altogether. Diversion would come from other areas, and other areas from the state budget down to the municipalities. We already have a diversion. We mm-hmm. would increase that diversion to offset that loss. Let me ask you about a couple of no votes that you have, and, and yes, as your, uh, have your views changed on that one? You voted no on the flag, not to uh, change the flag. Um, for a myriad of reasons, I'm sure. None mm-hmm. of them, uh, according to you, were racist, of course. But no, sir. Do you, do you think it's been helpful that we don't have that in front of us? Has your views changed on the, on the new flag? My position has always been the people of this state should have made that decision, not us. It's just that simple. I think the people had to make that call. I don't think it was right for us to make that call without giving them a, a ballot on it with, all, with multiple options. That's my you, position. You voted no on a bill that would require employees to pay the employees the, uh, the same wages regardless of sex. This was a couple of years ago. Is that still your feelings on this? No, sir. What was going on there, the bill at the time um, had a provision in it that made it unworkable. I'll give you an example. It had a provision at the very end of the bill that would have given um, individuals two bites at the lawsuit apple, one in federal court and one in state court. There's no other agenda item like that that I know in the law. Now think about it. You could have filed a lawsuit in one court, Mm -hmm. not been successful, and turned around conceivably and filed in a state court. I thought that was the wrong approach. So once that provision... Was that something that could have been corrected with an amendment? Yes, sir, and it was. This past year, that was fixed and tweaked, and I supported the bill. Okay, I got you. Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, one more. I I think you also voted against the lottery. Was that a mistake, or you think uh, we should not have had the lottery in the state of Mississippi? No, sir. Here's the way I look at the lottery. Um, It grew the size and scope of government. And as conservatives, our position is that government should be controlled and not continue to grow. Mm -hmm. My thought process was, if we brought in additional revenues from a lottery, let's reduce taxes elsewhere. Let's eliminate the car tax. Let's eliminate the income tax. Let's eliminate the grocery tax. So I wanted an offset provision in that bill before I could support it. And I I introduced a bill that it would, done, would have done that. I saw no need to grow the size of government without giving the taxpayers a break, and that's what I was trying to do. The, we didn't talk about the initiative process, but again, uh, well, we did to a point, but do you feel like that's going to come back as far as this next session is concerned? If I'm elected, it's agenda item one. Uh, absolutely. We have to have a ballot initiative process that's workable and fair for the people of this state. We'll do that on day one, yes, sir. Um, we got a couple of minutes here left, but I'll, I'll give it to you and let you uh, make your, uh, the, because this is, uh, uh, the, the primaries around the corner. It's going to be here faster than you know, and we're going to be deciding who's going to be on the Republican ticket, yes, who's going to be on the Democrat ticket. So your, your uh, uh, final thoughts here. We are fighting for the survival of this country. I believe that with all of my heart. I don't think there are many places left where we can push back and make it right. Mississippi is a refuge for conservative thought. We're good people. We're strong people. We worship a strong God, and we're stubborn, and we're wonderful, and we're beautiful. This is the place to make the fight. This is the place to hold the line in the sand and push back against liberals and tell them they're not welcome here. That includes Joe Biden's federal government. Everything we should do should be about the preservation of Republican principles and conservative principles in Mississippi. That is, traditional Mississippi principles. We can't do that, Paul by putting 13 Democrats in charge of the Senate. We can't do that by blocking conservative legislation. We can't do that by killing a parental bill of rights, Delbert Hoseman. We can't give Delbert Hoseman and his Democrat friends control of this chamber and expect Mississippi to remain Republican and remain conservative. Look, it's really simple. Let's win these states back. Let's reestablish sovereignty with Florida, 
with Texas, with Alabama, and let's push back against Joe Biden and tell him he is not going to bring that nonsense here. His woke culture is not going to be here. But we have to learn to fight, Paul. And that starts right here in Mississippi, not in Washington. Chris, Dan- Chris McDaniel, thank you, man. Appreciate it very much for coming in. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. You got it. Uh, State Senator Chris McDaniel, Mississippi Senator District 42, Forrest and Jones County, candidate for Mississippi 